Alrighty, hey man, how are y'all doing today? <laughs> I, I'm laughing at myself here. Because uh, I, I just got done tagging the, the, the people and, and, and trying to be as deliberate as possible about it and... Uh, got down there and I'm like, man, I'm not even halfway through the alphabet and I've already hit the 50 people. Okay, fine. And somehow in the process of moving from sitting down to putting it in to the uh, holder there so we can record, I managed to wipe out the whole list. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it takes a little too long to sit there and try to uh, get everybody back. So, I do apologize. <laughs> I messed up today. Uh, oh, well. Uh, best way I can look at that is, uh, you know what? I probably tagged people that God didn't want me bothering this morning. So, uh, we're just going to go with it that he knows better than I certainly do. Amen. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and start here in a word of prayer today. Our most gracious Father in heaven, we do thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. And uh, I just say it is uh, it is good to be able to sit here and laugh. Yeah, I love to laugh at myself. Uh, I am my own favorite target after all, but uh, we can be joyful. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I don't have to worry about being happy because uh, happy is based off of happenstance, chance, and all that stuff there. Uh, no, I'd rather have the true joy that is found in you. So thank you, Lord, for that. We do pray, Father, now for your blessings upon this day and upon this little service here. And everyone who tunes in uh, will be able to get exactly what it is that they need out of it. And yes, I know uh, some people are going to not be tuning in live today that normally would because of daylight saving time kicking in. Oh, how I wish they would stop that nonsense. Uh, at any rate, though, Father, I do ask you, Lord, please, for uh, Pastor Charlie Sarton and uh, his surgery that's going to be done there on the 18th that uh, it will accomplish what it is that the doctors are hoping that it will accomplish. Pray, Father, also for uh, Wesley Poston and Henry Allen, all of their issues that they've got going on uh, for mom and dad, and uh, uh, dad is battling the, the dementia. Do pray, Father, for help with them, and uh, in this time, help them, Lord, please, to get through it. And uh, we certainly know that uh, a lot of people, ourselves included, uh, all the financial issues that are needed, and uh, I know there are people out there looking for jobs, and uh, a couple of churches, they, they've got the vacancies for the pastors. Uh, both of them are, the uh, Walkerton uh, it comes to mind there, uh, Pastor Pete is uh, going to be retiring soon, and uh, Lakeview, that's the other one, that uh, they are still searching for a pastor, and we're asking, Father, please, for all these churches that are looking, that they will find the right man. And we pray, Father, for all the missionaries and evangelists for uh, all the support that they need and uh, that you would help them, Father, please, to get out there and, and follow your holy will and uh, bring in a lost and dying world the knowledge of Jesus Christ and that he can save. Thank you, God, for allowing us this opportunity here on Facebook to be able to have these little services. And we do pray, Lord, that people will get help from them. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. So... Uh, thought maybe we keep it a little simple here this morning. We'll start off with this wonderful song called Jesus Loves Me. Amen. <clears throat> Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, he who died, heaven's gates to open wide. He will wash away my sin, let his little child come in. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, loves me still. Oh, I'm very weak and ill, from his shining throne on high, comes to watch me where I lie. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Amen. Amen. Uh, I got a 
a song in my mind. I just don't know. Here it is. Yes, indeed. I'm like, well, do I got it? Where would it be? And we found it already. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Amen. Y'all have to excuse me. I got this little mat down here where I can stand and it's not as uncomfortable on my feet. And I had to move it the other day so I could do some work down here. And uh, I didn't put it back quite where it needs to be. So instead of helping my feet, it was starting to hurt my feet. <laughs> Alrighty. So leaning on the everlasting arms. What a fellowship. What a joy divine. Leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness. What a peace is mine. Leaning on the everlasting arms. So lean on Jesus. Lean on Jesus. Safe and secure from all alarms. Lean on Jesus. Lean on Jesus. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. And lean on Jesus, lean on Jesus, safe and secure from all alarms. Lean on Jesus, lean on Jesus, leaning on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting arms. And lean on Jesus. Lean on Jesus. Safe and secure from all alarms. Lean on Jesus. Lean on Jesus. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Amen. Amen. You may ask, preacher, is that biblical? Uh, yes, it is. You see there at the uh, the Last Supper, that uh, is recorded there in the Gospel according to John, that uh, John did just that. He, he leaned on Jesus' bosom there and, and asked the uh, required questions. And so, yeah, it is biblical for us to lean on Jesus. Amen. All right. Uh, Got your Bibles, if I hope you do, because uh, you've had plenty of time by now to find them one way or another. And uh, we're going to go over to the book of 3 John. And I'm going to try a little harder today to make sure I specify 3 John and not flip it around. <laughs> I don't want to say it because then I know I will start doing it. <laughs> All right, but the 3 John... And uh, last week we, we looked there at Gaius, and, and today we want to look at the next name that is brought up here of Diotrephes. Diotrephes. So 3 John, uh, only the one chapter, 14 verses. We're going to break in right in the middle at verse 9. The Bible says, I wrote unto the church, mm, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence among them, receiveth us not. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds which he doth, doth sorry, uh, pratting against us with malicious words, and not content therewith, neither doth he himself receive the brethren, and forbiddeth them that would, and casteth them out of the church. Mm. Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God, but he that doeth evil hath not seen God. Uh, Lord, being our helper today, what we'd like to do is bring our sermon on this thought here of a frustrating young man. A frustrating young man. Abba Father, we do thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. We thank you, Lord, once again for this opportunity to get to have this little service here. And we do pray, Father, that everyone will get exactly what is it they need out of the service here today. And that those who are able to will make sure that they 
uh, get off to their regularly appointed church services today if they're watching this here on Sunday or whatever day of the week it would be. At the, they make sure that they're in your house at the next appointed time. I thank you, God, for loving us and saving us. We do pray, Father, for all those who are, are in need of uh, financial blessings, uh, in need of uh, health blessings. Yeah. Pray, Father, for uh, uh, Pastor Charles Sarton there and uh, his surgery coming up there on the 18th. Uh, Henry Allen, Wesley Poston, uh, their their health issues, mom and dad, all those who are still battling this COVID, and uh, whether they realize it or not, whatever the case is there, Father. Pray, Father, for our churches that we will uh, get going, get back to where we need to be with you so that we can help this lost and dying world. We, we know that the, the days are getting to be fewer and fewer here. And we're so looking forward to that trumpet sounding and Jesus stepping out there in the cloud of glory to, to call us all home. But that's it for now, Father. We do pray, Lord, for your blessings upon this sermon. In Jesus' precious name we do pray. Amen and amen. <clears throat> so this uh, frustrating young man here, uh, we certainly, as we uh, look here at this passage of Scripture, and, and if John... The beloved John the Apostle is having problems with him. Uh, then we know that there's an issue going on here. And, and certainly anyone who has been in church uh, to any extent, uh, they have most likely uh, witnessed someone who, who, when it comes to the cause of Christ, they're frustrating. <laughs> they ain't helping. They're frustrating it. And... The reason they're able to be so successful at frustrating is because uh, they're backed by Satan, one way or another here. Uh, whether they are still lost or, or, or that they are saved, but they, they, they've got too much of the world in them and not enough of Jesus, uh, whatever the case is there, uh, Satan is on the attack. And he's not just on the outside of those four walls. He, he gets in there on the inside and not just in the uh, uh, the uh, electronics and the the uh, microphone system and the speakers. I mean, he, he will get into anything and everything that he possibly can to be a hurt and a hindrance to frustrate the cause of Christ right there in the church. Because if he can do it there inside of the church... He knows he is crippling the outreach of the church. So he don't mind Christians who will go to church, but who will act on his behalf. Diotrephes, from all that we read in these three verses here, is acting on behalf of of Satan. Now I am not going to stand here today and tell you that, that Diotrephes right now is burning in hell. I don't know. This is, what, 1,900 years ago. I weren't around then, okay? Uh, and even if I was, I still wouldn't know his heart. And even those who act up in church that, that cause problems, I don't know their heart today. They, they could be sitting next to me in church. I don't know their heart. I don't know my wife's heart, my daughter's heart. I only know my own heart because I am a finite human being. I, I can't, I cannot see what others are thinking and, and the true motives and all this stuff. There, I'm not God, in other words. Which makes it a little bit more on the frustrating part because we just don't know about such people. Uh, so we need to be praying about them. Praying for them to, to get the help that they need to get past it. But in the meantime, I, I really want to look here at this fellow named Diatrophes. And, and so we can understand, you know, what in the world it is that we're up against. And this particular uh, individual, and, and please do not forget the fact that back here in these days, nowadays we name kids, you know, whatever we feel like for whatever reason. Uh, back then, the, their names meant so much more. And in his particular case, diatrophies means nourished by Jove, J-O-V-E. And when you get in there and you study that out at least a little bit more there, uh, Jove is another name for the Roman god Jupiter. Uh, you may know him better by the Greek name Zeus. So in other words, in this particular 
particular instance here, uh, we're dealing with the fellow who's not a very godly man. And I know, I know some may want to split the hair and say, well, yeah, he is a godly man, just a false god. Uh, yeah, okay, fine, let's, let's throw that off to the side there. Uh, but the fact of the matter remains, this is not a guy who is operating in God's power. My God's power. He, he's operating more with the power of this world. And I believe that we will see it here as we go through trying to understand this guy here. First of all, I want you to notice about this fellow who is nourished by Jove, Diotrephes, his attitude, his, the, the, the kind of disposition that he has about him. In verse number 9, uh, John starts off, he says, I wrote unto the church, colon. Now, whenever you see that colon, we, we know we've got something going on here. We've got a change of thought. There's something that, that has jumped the tracks at this point. But Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence among them, receiveth us not. The, the preeminence, that word means that he's fond of being first. Uh, in other words, that this is a guy who says, y'all need to be paying attention to moi. I was doing a little bit of studying this past week about the, the Pharisees there as I was trying to get some writing done as before I really got here into the sermon. But I see just how much he, he lines up with the, the whole concept of the Pharisees and, and how they uh, strive to have the mastery of all, that they, they want everybody to look to them, to bow to them, to notice them, that it's all about them. Me, 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 me. And I am what you need, and that I will tell you what to do, and that I will lead you, and that I will guide you, and that you need to be paying your respects to me. You need to be kissing my ring and all that. Me, me, me. They want the preeminence. They pretend to worship God. They pretend to follow God. But when it comes down to it, they're the ones who want to be large and in charge. Oh, worship God, but make sure you do it my way. Ew. That just puts a bad taste in your mouth just saying that about them and their attitude. But that's what Diotrephes is all about here. And I'm sure we've all come across some, uh, some of the brethren who operate on that same wavelength. That they, they want to have everybody channeling everything through them. And they're not doing it right. This is in the matter of that they've got a particular responsibility and they're trying and they are in charge of it. So hey, look, we need to make sure that we are focused and we're doing it right. We're not talking about that. We're talking about somebody here who, who's trying to operate where they've got no business operating in a capacity they've got no business operating in. They can have their preeminence. But if God ain't getting everything he's supposed to, they're wrong. And it's not just with this desire to be first, to be the, the one that everybody looks to. But he also, in verse number 10, we find that he's prating against us. The word prating means idle talk or mischievous talk. He's prating against us. He's making things up. He's twisting things. He's doing everything he possibly can to make others look bad. To put others down. To put others in their place. Instead of raising them up. Instead of encouraging them. He does the exact opposite of what it is that needs to be done here. But then also goes on to say that uh, Pratt against us with malicious words. So he's using petty words. 
The, the word malicious in itself means to be spiteful or hurtful. This is a guy who talks big and he doesn't mind speaking his mind. And he will walk all over somebody to accomplish what it is that he wants to get done. He will destroy the pastor if he is a deacon or somebody else in the church. If he is the pastor, he will make sure to crush everybody so as that he is the one that everybody knows is in charge. It's a wrong attitude. And it's a frustrating attitude to the body of Christ. It's a type of an attitude here that, that will push the new converts back out into the world. It ain't going to cost them their salvation, but it's going to cost them their growth in Christ. It, it's a type of attitude that will go ahead and bust the church wide open. That will regulate God. To just being, well, it's his house, but it's my place. It's a poor attitude that frustrates all. But not only is this frustrating young man got a poor attitude, but he's got some bad actions about him. Back there in verse number 9, it says, Who loveth to have the preeminence among them, and receiveth us not. His actions, he receives us not. In other words, he does not want John to come there. He says that I wrote under the church, and I could just imagine the first couple letters, John writes, hey, I'd like to come and visit, and Diotrephes writes back, no. Period. Send that off. What we're looking at here, he says, I wrote, this is John, the Apostle John, wants to come to this church and visit. Diotrephes is, nope, don't need you, don't want you. I got to thinking about how a few years ago uh, over there at Sunrise, uh, Pastor Columbus Chappelle for Pastor's Appreciation one month, we, we brought up his pastor, Tolbert Moore. And it was going to be a big, you know, big surprise and all this. And uh, so the Sunday morning service after Sunday school, uh, Pastor Clement got up there and uh, did the first song, did the announcements, and then someone stood up and says, all right, we, we got a surprise for you. Uh, you need to close your eyes. So he closed his eyes, and they, they brought in uh, Pastor Tolbert Moore, and he came up front, and they handed him a wireless microphone. And while Clement still got his eyes closed, he says, I'm here to preach for you today. Clement's eyes shot open, his jaw hit the ground. Whoa, this is amazing. And, it, and it, you know, they embraced it. And then he said, you are the only person who could walk into this church here and tell me that you are going to preach today. And I would say, yes, sir, too. <laughs> John should have been extended the exact same courtesy. Diotrephes, I'm, I'm coming there. And, and Diotrephes said, well, should have said, well, wow, this is like, 90 A.D., uh, the f first century's about to close in a couple of years. You actually walk with Jesus. Come on, let, let's hear. Even if it's just your short little sermon you love to bring uh, about how uh, we are to love one another. Come on, to, come on. He should have been excited. But instead, he refused John. Go away. Stay away. I don't want you here. Not good. It's a bad action. But I want you to notice something. It said, receiveth us not. Who's John talking about when he says us? Well, obviously, if you've got an us, you've got at least two. John is one of the two. Okay, well, well that makes sense. But I would submit to you today that it's not just a matter of John. That he's talking also about Jesus. That Jesus was not welcomed at this church by Diotrephes. That he was telling our Lord and Savior, Don't need you, don't want you, stay away. You'll change everything. I've got it set the way I want. Don't you dare come in here and start rearranging what I've set up. This is my 
church. Things will be done my way. I've yet to read it in the Bible where God says that's my plan is for man to have it his way. Uh, the church ain't Burger King. We don't get to have it our way. We're supposed to have it God's way. But he's rejecting Jesus. And that's a major problem. It's a bad action. May I say not only is he not receiving, but he's raising walls as well. Verse 10 says, Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds, which he doeth, pratting against us with malicious words. Colon. Okay. Getting off here a little bit. And not content therewith. In other words, just his words ain't enough for him. He's got some other actions here. Not content therewith. Neither doth he himself receive the brethren, and forbiddeth them that would, and casteth them out of the church. Not content means it ain't enough for him. He will go above and beyond refusing John. He is raising some walls up here. The church is supposed to be tearing down walls. We're supposed to be tearing down the walls of, of hell. We're supposed to be tearing down the walls that Satan erects. We're supposed to be tearing down the walls of self-defense that so many will put up, saying, I don't need to be saved, and letting them know, yes, you do need to be saved. You do need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, because you, like every other human being who's been born on this earth with a human daddy, you're a sinner. You're a sinner by nature, and one day if you die lost in your sins, you will split hell wide open. We need to be tearing down those walls. Diotrephes is raising them up instead. So how's he doing that? Well, it goes on here to say, Neither doth he himself receive the brethren. He won't let anyone in that he does not approve of. Now, if someone were to go and to join a church, they, they need to talk with the pastor. They, they need to uh, give their testimony. They, they, they need to have been uh, reviewed by the pastor. See what's going on here. What, is, is this somebody who I know something about? Okay, all right, fine. They didn't just walk in off the street and say, I want to join your church. You, you got to hold off on that. You don't know nothing about them because you don't want to bring a diatrophies in. What Diotrephes is saying, oh, you want to follow Jesus and not me? <laughs> Don't need you. Oh, you do, you think that the, the pastor should be the head of the church and not the deacon board? Well, I don't need you. Oh, you think that we actually should try to go out and witness to a lost and dying world? Don't need you. You want to support missionaries? Nope, don't need you. That ain't helpful, church. That's raising walls. Not only does he himself... Uh, let's see, uh, he himself does not receive the brethren and forbiddeth them that would. In other words, he won't let others take people in. Someone actually wants to, to go out and, and, and get the buses rolling. Let, let's get out there to the community and bring them in. The Bible says go out to the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be full. Where do you want to run those buses? You want to run those buses to the ghetto? Oh, no, we can't do that because our, our nice, clean, shiny buses will get dirty by those dirty people. No, 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 can't do that. Uh, why don't you take the buses over there to, to the rich part of town, to the, the Beverly Hills side? Hello, if they're rich, they don't need a bus. They've got a car. Take the buses where the people ain't got the vehicle so that they can get to church and bring them in. Diotrephes, no, 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 no. We'll help those who, who can and can make sure they put in a few extra bucks in the offering plate. We'll, we'll help those who are going to tell me just how good a job I'm doing. We ain't going to help those who actually need help. That's wrong. I don't care how you want to spell that. That's wrong. I don't care how you want to pronounce it. That's wrong. God's blessed your church with the means to go out there and, and, and witness to people. Use it to go and witness to people. Don't matter if they are black, white, brown, yellow, green with purple polka dots. Don't matter if they are male or female. Don't matter if they are rich or poor. God says to go out there and witness to them. 
These people who will be frustrated in the cause of Christ will say, no, they don't fit our demographic. Your demographic should be mankind. End of story. But on top of that, when he's raising these walls here, he casts them out of the church. In other words, he runs off those people who do try to win the loss for Christ. Who don't care about skin color. Who don't care. Oh, you're a homosexual. I'm sorry. You, uh, you can't get saved until, or even come to our church until you stop being homosexual. No, you go out there and you let them know, hey, Jesus Christ loves you. And he wants to save you. I said, preacher, come on now. The homosexuals, yeah. First Corinthians chapter number six talks about it. You know what? Let me turn over there. I, I got this itch. I got to scratch it now. Hadn't even thought about going this direction until we're preaching here. But you know what? We're going to do it. We want to be obedient to the Lord. First Corinthians chapter number six. Verse number 9, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Praise God, Diotrephes says that's right, right there. The Bible says they can't get in. I'm so glad that I'm not Diotrephes, because I'll go ahead and read verse 11. And such were some of you. But ye are washed. But ye are sanctified. But ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus. Not in the name Diotrephes. Not in the name of anybody else but the Lord Jesus. Don't worry about what sin they commit. Just because they sin differently than you does not mean that they're not allowed a chance to come in and get saved. Amen. <laughs> but Diotrephes says, no, they sin differently than me. I, no, we can't have them. And Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That I am not willing that any should perish, but that all should come unto repentance. These are wrong actions. That frustrates the cause of Christ. May I say also here that it generates an awkwardness inside of the individual church. Verse 11. Beloved. Let me just pause right there. That word beloved means esteemed. He ain't writing to Diotrephes. He's already tried doing that. Diotrephes has refused him. Third John is written to the well-beloved Gaius. Back there in verse number one. So, beloved, Gaius, follow not that which is evil. See, Gaius has proven that he's uh, not one to follow the crowd. That he's not one to blaze his own trail away from Christ. That he walks in the truth. That he wants to serve the Lord. Some uh, expositors, Bible scholars, believe that Gaius and Diotrephes uh, may have even been co-pastors of the church. I don't know if that's the case. Like I said before, I weren't there. But one thing's for sure. John recognizes the heart of Gaius, and he recognizes the dead heart of Diotrephes, and he needs to make this distinction here. If anything is to go forward as it should and not as it wants to. He says here, Follow not that which is evil. The word evil means a mode of thinking, feeling, acting, troublesome, destructive, bad, bad-natured, or injurious. Such a man as Diotrephes, as we said, is going to end up splitting the church. He's going to end up doing more harm than good. It is his very nature because he is evil. He that doeth good, the Bible says, is of God, but he that doeth evil hath not seen God. He that doeth evil, those four words there, means to do harm, evil, or wrong. 
In other words, everything that Diotrephes is doing is bad. It is evil. It is of Satan. Then he uses this word here, seen. He that doeth evil hath not seen God. The word seen means to experience. To know firsthand, personally, what is going on. This kind of person, you, you, you really got to question if they have been saved or not. If they're acting like Diotrephes. Instead of acting like Gaius or John? Have they really experienced Christ coming into their heart? Or have they just had a near experience like, yeah, Jesus, yeah, I heard him. Yeah, I heard he, heard he died for my sins. Okay, I'm saved. Good enough. And they've not actually let him in. They've not actually believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. They've not actually confessed to him that they are sinners needing to be saved. Diotrephes, dare I say, is a uh, a spiritual leader that even Pontius Pilate would say he's only doing this for envy's sake. Remember Pilate said that about the chief priests when they delivered Jesus up to be crucified. That they're doing this for envy's sake. Uh, the word envy means to want something that somebody else rightfully has that does not belong to you. The, the chief priest wanted Christ's power and authority and admiration of the people. As we said, the diatrophy certainly seems to fall into that vein of the, the scribes and Pharisees there. The chief priest, that he's wanting to have what belongs to Christ. Even these little uh, church services that we're doing here at Garage Baptist. Uh, I don't intend for them to be your church service for Sunday for, for to get you through the whole week here. This is just a, a supplemental service here to help get you through till Sunday morning time starts or during the course of the week, something to, to go back and check out and, and hear what God's got. I don't mean for this to be your service. If, if, this, if you are going to deliberately choose to, to substitute Garage Baptist here for whatever church that you're supposed to be going to, please stop watching and get to church. The Bible says not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. This is just me preaching to the, the camera. Whoever's on the other side listening, hey, great. I, I love that you're tuning in. But please don't misunderstand me. Get to church. I'm just here trying to be of help. But we can help each other more if we are actually in church. But diatrophies, stay with me now, diatrophies would be like, yes, tune in. I need all of your likes. I need all of your comments, all of your shares. And yes, we would appreciate getting that so we know someone's listening. But the, the fact that matters, he would be doing it for his own ego. He would be doing it to grow a larger audience uh, so as he could be the, the next Joel Osteen or, or whatever there. I don't want to be the next Joel Steen. I want to be the servant of Jesus. So accordingly, this will be our final point here. Accordingly. John comes down here in verse 14 and he writes, But I trust I shall shortly see thee, and we shall speak face to face. John knows what Diotrephes is doing. He knows it's wrong, and he intends to put a stop to it. Now the Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses it shall be established. He's writing here to Gaius. Gaius is right there at the church. He sees for himself. He is a witness to the wrong of Diotrephes. 
In verse number 12, we see the name Demetrius. Demetrius, and he hath a good report of all men, and of the truth itself. Yea, and we also bear record, and ye know that our record is true. So there's Demetrius. Some say he was a member of the church. Uh, some say that he was a, a visiting evangelist. Uh, some say that he was a missionary, uh, that he's also a preacher. I, I don't know, but I do know this. He's got a good report about him. And I think that John bringing him up here, he's saying Demetrius also knows what's going on. So is that we are going to get this thing resolved because we've got three solid witnesses to the wrong that's going on here. So why is that important? What can be done for someone who's a diatrophies? Glad you asked. I like when you ask those questions. See, John was there when Jesus spoke in Matthew 18, verse 15 to 17. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. Let me pause right there. Go back up here to verse number 9. I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence among them, receiveth us not. So it seems like John's already tried going one-on-one -on -one with Diotrephes, and Diotrephes ain't listening. So we continue back here in Matthew 18. But if he will not hear thee, then take thou, then take with thee one or two more, Gaius and Demetrius, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let it let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. In other words. The guy's authority is going to be taken away. His responsibility is going to be taken away. Because it's supposed to be good, godly men leading God's church. Now, that's Jesus. And we could easily sit there and say, yeah, but uh, that's Matthew. And and if you, you want to look at it, uh, that, you know, Jesus is talking to Jews. He's, we're still in a Jewish time. And the church really doesn't begin until Acts. So really, can that apply? I'm glad you asked that question too. Paul writes in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 19 and 20, Against an elder received not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses, them that sin rebuke before all, that others also may fear. And give you a little bit of a bridge for the, the, the gap there. Uh, James, who's the half-brother of Jesus there on, on uh, Mary's side, said in James 5, 19 and 20, Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save his soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. In other words... Someone who's like this, you don't just throw them out of the church. You do your utmost to get them back on track. To, to get, get them to understand their need to change, get saved, if that's whatever the case is that's going on here. You don't just cut them off. You come in and you try to get them straightened out. You don't let them continue going on doing their own thing. You try to get them back right with where they need to be with God so as that the local assembly can grow. Not just to, so as that it's, oh, look at us, but look at him. I've got just two questions and a statement here for you this morning. The first question is this, how does God view us in his church? As a diatrophies or as a Gaius? The second question, are we causing problems? We're working to solve them. And my statement is this. The only putting down of people should be done when we put them down on our prayer list. Abba Father, we do thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us and all that you're going to do. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to bring this sermon here today. And we hope and pray, Father, that each and every one gets exactly what it is that they need out of the service here today. And that everyone will do their utmost to be in church today. And that we will all strive to serve you your way. Thank you, Father, once again for all you've done for us and all that you're going to do. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen and amen.
All right, we'll go to our usual closing song here today. Actually, you know what? We're not. Let's do Sweet Hour of Prayer. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, that calls me from a world of care, and bids me at my Father's throne, make all my wants and wishes known. In seasons of distress and grief, my soul has often found relief. And oft escape the tempter snare by thy return, sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, may I thy consolation share, till from my Pisgah's lofty height I view my home and take my flight. This robe of flesh shall drop and rise To seize the everlasting prize And shout while passing through the air Farewell, farewell, sweet hour of prayer Amen, amen I certainly do thank you for your attention May the good Lord go with you throughout the course of your week our most gracious Father in heaven, we thank you here one more time for being so good to us, for loving us, and for saving a wretch like me. I'm thankful, Lord, that despite the fact I will never, ever, ever possibly deserve it, you still in your infinite grace and wisdom and mercy loved me. <laughs> loved me before I even knew you. And you sent your own son to die in my place. I still can't fathom it. It still makes no sense. But I'm so grateful, Father, that you did. We pray, Father, now for each one of the prayer requests that been made known here and the unspoken that you would take care of them according to your holy will. Pray, Father, for your blessings upon all the service that will be going on today. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen and amen. Y'all have a good one. Make sure that you go to church today.